Hello, everybody, and thank you for seeking out and pushing play on the Rocker Dog Podcast, the only podcast that talks to musicians about their canine companions and the dynamic relationship we share. I'm your host, Tim Dill, accompanied by my producer and bestest friend, Charlie the Golden Doodle, and today we have a fun, entertaining, and a bit profound conversation with Gina Gleason, guitarist for the band Baroness who will be kicking off their 21-date European tour tonight, October 29th, in Gothenburg, Sweden. And this is her long-distance running, Rocker Dog. Um, we'll be speaking of Rachel, who okay. is asleep on the sofa. Now, what is she? Is She, uh, she looks like a, a pit mix. She looks a lot like these black and white pit mixes that I see it at the shelter I volunteer at, is yeah. that accurate? That is accurate, yeah. I did the DNA test and it said she was 96% pit bull and 4% massive. I don't know how accurate those are, but. She- oh, there she, oh my gosh, beautiful. Yeah. Hey bud. Got yeah. those sweet pity eyes. Yeah, she's a good girl. <laughs> Sorry, you what probably did- have a lot of dog speak on this. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> what does she weigh in at? She's just under like 60 pounds. And uh, what was the process of you kind of finding her and, you know, the context of her coming into your, your life? Um, Rachel, it was a foster fail. Um, okay. So around the time of the pandemic or kind of towards the end of the larger chunk of like the lockdown part, uh, I just kept seeing on like our local news sources that a lot of the shelters, specifically the ACCT shelter in Philadelphia, which is where she's from, was uh, at capacity is probably putting it lightly. There is a lot of dogs that needed homes like like there always is. But I think around that time, there was a big influx. So uh, they were just like looking for fosters. So yeah, I was looking at their website. Initially, they have a program called the ACCT Runners Club. That's initially what I thought I could do because I go running and uh, I thought I could go. And w- what it is, is they have you go and take the dogs out for a little jog and, you know, get them some fresh air and out of the shelter for, you know, an hour or so. Yep. And then through that application process, I was like, I think I could just probably foster a dog because I have a backyard and space for a dog. And we weren't on tour yet. We had a little bit of time before we were going to be on tour again. So I went to the shelter and saw Rachel (laughs) Uh, that was her shelter name and she just looked like she needed to get out of there she seemed very stressed and uh, she was just in her kennel shaking and you know not dealing well with the kennel life so yeah yeah I inquired about her and they said that she had kind of just got there and the owner that surrendered her didn't really fill out the paperwork they just kind of like dumped her I think they just like threw her out of the vehicle yeah. and drove off and so yeah she's kind of a mystery as far as you know her backstory and all that but um, do you know how old she is about could they judge by her i guess her teeth or paws? yeah i i guess she was about like almost two at that time one and a half or two yeah somewhere around there and do you get a reaction from people when you show up with a pity or walk a pity yeah i mean people really like her i mean i think she's really cute you know like people seem to really uh be drawn to her she's got really droopy uh like a really droopy face and Mm -hmm. uh she's got kind of please love me (laughs) face um so we usually get a positive reaction um she's pretty reactive on walks uh with other dogs so we try to just do our own thing but with people yeah it's it's pretty positive uh in our neighborhood there's a lot of dogs I think in Philadelphia in general, there's a lot of pits, so there's it's not like a abnormal to see one, you know. Yeah. So how would you rate? Speaking of that, how would you rate Philly as a dog town? I mean, are they pretty accommodating? Are people pretty accustomed to? I think you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. I think Philly in general is very dog friendly. There's a lot of dog friendly places you can go. There's a ton of dog parks. We don't do that because of her reactivity, and I'm just not crazy about dog parks uh, Mm -hmm. personally but there are a lot of them you know if your dog is cool with that yeah in our neighborhood uh which is called maniunk it's a very dog friendly place to hang out so great great and you know i noticed you guys tour quite a bit or you go on these like 29 date two month stints 
Um, who do you trust her with when you go on these tours? Yeah, I live at home with my partner and she's a nurse. So she works really long shifts. She's a nurse at the, in the cardiac ICU. So oh my gosh. her job's intense. And um, <laughs> yeah, so there is someone at home, but um, like our schedule, it, it's, it's grueling and can kind of be long, like really long days. So we're very, very fortunate to have a wonderful friend in the neighborhood that runs a pet sitting and dog walking business called Cat Cares. Okay. Uh, that's cat with a K. Uh, her name's Kathleen. And I always tell Kathleen that she's just like a pillar of the community because everybody trusts her with their pets. She's all, she knows everybody in the neighborhood, everybody in like the surrounding neighborhoods that yeah. has a pet, like probably knows cat. And um, <laughs> she's just such a wonderful, lovely person and just has like She's just so selfless and takes on these responsibilities of like walking pets and, and, yeah. and taking them into her own home and, and caring for them. So yeah, we're, we're extremely lucky to have a friend like her and, and especially in such close proximity. So That's great. I noticed her in a post and so I followed that rabbit hole to her, oh, yeah. to her Instagram awesome. and it, it, was, it was nice to see like she had Rachel in a couple of posts and you yeah. see that Rachel is good with kids yep. and oh, seemed yeah. to be good with a uh, certain other dog. So it's really great to see, you know, how Rachel's personality kind of comes out and also her temperament gets not tested, but you get to see what a great dog she is. Yeah, I think Kat is so special because she's so good with dogs and she's like so chill and uh, she's good at letting them have the space to like figure out each other's personalities where it's like safe because she's watching them, but she's like, her personality is laid back enough where she can let it happen. Yeah, uh, I feel very like stressed in situations where she might react to another dog because I just, I don't know, I just have that like um, stressful instinct where I don't want... Yeah. Happen, you know, and uh, yeah. and she's just like really good at managing that space and still being the one in charge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm like definitely a pushover and I get a lot of anxiety. <laughs> so, yeah. So Rachel's lucky to have Kat, too, because it allows her an opportunity to socialize. And, you know, we kind of we, we really know like her her thresholds. We know her body language really well. Kat really knows her body language well to like stop a situation if it's like, oh, these dogs these two personalities aren't, you know, yeah. the best. Yeah, so. yeah, that's great. Now, yeah. when you do come home from one of these tours, what's your reunion look like? You know, is Rachel uh, yeah. flip out or is she standoffish? No, she, we both like flip out. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm like always so happy to see her. Like sometimes I'll like literally cry. It's really like <laughs> probably annoying to watch because uh, I miss her a lot. You know, she's like my buddy. When we're not on tour, I work from home a lot. I teach music lessons and work on recordings or whatever the band has going on. And so we're just like side by side, you know, pretty much all day. Yeah, I definitely really miss my buddy when we're on the road. So yeah, yeah that's always sweet. I get I get the hero's welcome just by going out to yeah. the mailbox and back. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to try something new with you and just ask you how Rachel would rate on the following roles. So from one to 10, 10 being great, one being poor. Okay. And you've already kind of answered the first one, but the first one was how does she rate as a personal trainer? Does she keep you out and about and exercised? Yeah, I would say 10 out of 10, she's a great trainer. So my partner it does a lot of like marathons and she participates in like the Ironman triathlons and stuff like that. So she is always taking Rachel out for runs, but wow. way more than I do. And they'll go like uh, the longest she has done is 11 miles. Holy cow. That was my next and, question. That's great. Yeah. And because my, again, I am like anxious with Rachel, like reacting i like to take a chill walk where she can like sniff around and we try to just avoid dogs if we can and, and uh, spring treats and I try to redirect her my partner's really good at being like nope we're going for a run and the run kind of keeps her focused there are other dogs and she has that more laid back kind of personality too where the anxiety of the person isn't feeding into the dog and heightening the yeah the, the interaction so yeah so those two are great together so i'll see yeah, speaking on her behalf 10 out of 10 personal trainer Okay. How is she as a bodyguard or security detail? 
10 out of 10, even when we don't need her to be. <laughs> Is she yeah. reactive to like doorbells or knocks on the door or anything? Absolutely. You know, like yeah, yeah. Standard Elite stuff like that. Calling, yeah. She's pretty reactive. But I, I liken that to this is her home. I don't know what her situation was before. So I, I think she really is like, doesn't want anybody to encroach on her space in a negative way. Like um, yeah. we, we try to reassure Rachel a lot that like she's safe and this is her home and she doesn't need to be like so on guard. But yeah, she's definitely like yeah. uh, reactive. To did she ever show any signs, you know, from shelter life? Was she ever apprehensive or did she kind of, you know, adapt pretty quickly to, you know, living with you? She was a little like shy at first. Like she waited to be invited to like sit on the sofa and stuff like that. Um, yeah, she was definitely unsure. At our house, we have a basement and she didn't go that, down there for almost two years. She would just stand at the top of the steps. If we were down there, she would cry. So I don't know if she had some bad experience or what that would be all about, but um, yeah, but now she can go down there. She's a little more confident now. So That's good. Good yeah. to hear. Uh, and last, as a therapy dog, is she good with your mental well-being? 10 out of 10. Yes. Yeah. She's just like a couch potato and loves to snuggle. And if I'm upstairs working and she's on the couch or in the room with me, just if I'm frustrated or stuck on something or just having a bad day or a good day, no matter what's going on. She's always just like stoked to see you. She's like, Oh my God. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's really cool. But I think just having like, you know, having her around, it makes me feel calm uh, aside from the walks. Like you're talking about earlier. Right. Uh, yeah. Just her presence is just so, so wonderful. And just kind of having something outside of yourself to really like care for and look after and, you know, I don't have children or anything, so I'm like really looking after this life for me. Yeah. Is she physically affectionate? Does she like to be, does she like her body weight on yours or leaning against yours? Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I see the best part of a pity is their face when they kind of look at you adoringly. Totally. So what's your history with dogs? Are you a dog person because you're kind of raised that way? Did you grow up with dogs? I did not grow up with dogs. My family is like, we're not like really a pet family like growing up didn't have any pets in the house my grandmother and mom are historically like pretty terrified of dogs my grandmother had some dog chasing her through the neighborhood experience yeah. as a child and was like really really afraid of dogs they all love rachel my grandmother's get getting a little bit older and having a hard time like kind of remembering things and kind of going down that path and uh i see her with rachel and it's just like i don't know she just loves like sitting with her and petting her you can tell it's yeah. like very therapeutic so that's that's really nice so no didn't grow up with dogs and then I did have um a dog from a shelter years ago and I, I lived in Las Vegas and there was a shelter out there that I rescued a dog from and then ended up having a really like tragic experience with the dog where she needed to be rehomed I kind of had to just make the call um so it's kind of, kind of a long story but the, the dog was very like prey driven, very reactive. And I don't know what her history was. She was also from a shelter, but working with some trainers out there. And then when I moved back to Philadelphia, where I live now, uh, different trainers here, we kind of assumed she may have been a, like a bait dog in a dog fighting type of situation. Right. Not confirmed, but that was kind of like the opinion. The temperament. Of the different trainers. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, she just had that. Thing where she needed to like escape we would try to do training around the door and she would like constantly try to like get out wow. um she dug out a couple times and was just kind of like not great in the neighborhood and, and just like not great with other dogs and i felt like he was irresponsible for me to have the dog especially with how much we travel and we were starting to i was starting to tour with the band and stuff like that so ended up making the call to like rehome the dog to a more appropriate place um and she was placed into a home very shortly after kind of making that decision. Yeah. So. Was that the Kelpie? The Australian yeah. Kelpie? Yeah. Named Kelpie. And, um, oh, okay. The name was Kelpie. The yeah. Dog. And we think she was an Australian Kelpie as the breed, but also unconfirmed. She was probably like a pit shepherd mix kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah. I was curious about that breed because I, I had read up that they're, they've got inexhaustible energy. 
But that said, a good balance between the keenness to work, they are working dogs, at least Australian Kelpies are, and the ability to relax. But it sounds like a very smart dog. So if this dog wanted out, it could figure itself. I have never out how to get like, experienced, I mean, I didn't have any experience with pets at the time at all. And I've since never mm-hmm. experienced a dog like quite like this. I really, I, I don't really talk about it because the experience makes me feel like I failed the dog. You know, right. it's kind of like a sore like thought when I think back on it. I think like now I feel like I have more of the tools that I could have done a better job, but ultimately I just felt it wasn't responsible for me to have the type of dog with like that level of needs and taking away the like touring aspect, just like even just like living in a city. Like, I feel like she really needed a task and like, um, yeah, space. Yeah. Well, just- I, I, I don't beat yourself up. I mean, it's because one thing, you know, as a host of a podcast about dogs, I'm still learning about it every day. And one of the things I'm realizing early on was how these different breeds really do have different personalities and some of those personalities that you know take a very it takes a very uh patient or disciplined person to raise that dog they are not only high energy but high intelligence and that energy needs to be burned both physically and mentally and to me when i realize that in, in speaking to people and researching it's like yeah i don't know if that's i don't know if that's me i don't know if i could handle a dog like that totally and coming out of that experience, were you particular into what your next dog was going to be? Absolutely. I, I was like, I'm never having a dog again because I felt like I really botched that like situation, like that time of my life, you know. But having a foster felt more appropriate to me. And then kind of meeting Rachel and getting to know like her personality and kind of like just how she adapted to the household. I don't know. I think I felt like maybe this is an opportunity for me to give like another dog a chance. And I just really didn't want to like give up on her, you know? Yeah. I sort of felt like I was put myself in a situation where I had to give up on a dog in the past. And that really like eaten at me and still does, you know? Yeah. Well, there's two ways to give up on a dog. And the one way like you were describing with Rachel is to dump it. Right. You know, unfortunately, at least you took the the steps to find the right next owner so yeah. so it's funny uh, again i say this ad nauseum but you know the only way to get kind of information is to go through social media and i you know it's always funny when you go all the way through so- someone's social media and this happens more times than not with this particular podcast but the first post is dog oriented do you remember your first post no it's 10 years ago it's june 2014 <laughs> your first instagram post is entitled studio dogs and it's you with a brown and white dog. I couldn't tell the, the dog's in a blur, but it's on like an oriental rug. Yeah. Okay. This would be like, at a, I think at a friend's house that has a studio. I would have to like look at it to refresh my memory, which is pretty <laughs> bad because I posted it on the internet. But yeah, uh, not my dogs, but dogs that I loved and was hanging out with. <laughs> okay. Well, I like, again, like I, I hear many times that the studio dogs are the coolest dogs to hang out with. Totally. And probably like would be uh, remiss if I didn't talk about uh, John, our the singer and. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fairness. Um, he is an awesome dog who is Rachel's like best friend. Oh, that's great. And, I've like, seen a couple of pictures of them together. Yeah, they do super well together. He's a really, uh, really well-trained, great listener, like great dog, amazing temperament. Yeah, <laughs> his dog is funny. Like he really like will try to like herd, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. like sitting or if everyone's standing, like you could tell he's like trying to herd people. He, he'll like herd Rachel, you know, she's like, I don't know, whatever. And, <laughs> um, but yeah, they oh. got to have like a task. We call oh, Rachel, like, she's like a mall cop. She's like either like asleep or she's like, who's there? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, I wind up every show with uh, what I call the Zoomies. And that's just five intense, very profound questions. The first one is, do you kiss Rachel on the mouth? Absolutely. Okay, good. That's the correct answer. <laughs> Second question is, does Rachel have a theme song? Um, Rachel has a lot of songs that I sing to her constantly and I I will spare you. Okay. Are they, are they songs you'll hear on the radio and then you slip in her, her name or are they just songs you kind of make up out of the All of the above. Okay. Just (laughs) constant, constant singing and calling her 
different names. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. hypothetically, if she was to tour, what would she want on her tour rider? Um, a sofa to sit on. Okay. Is she allowed and on the furniture? She's allowed on the furniture. She doesn't sleep in the bed because she's a little like she kind of takes over. You <laughs> I know? can imagine. And yeah. she's like kind of like a dead weight. She's just like big, yeah. hard to move. So she's got her own bed. Uh, she is allowed on my sofa. She sits on Kathleen's sofa, and uh, but there are other like households where there's no dogs on the furniture, and she's she's very adaptable. She can like okay. pick up on the, the cues. Any uh, any must have treats that she'd want in catering? Peanut butter and cheese, but that would be like bad for everybody else. She is very gassy. Um, <laughs> she loves After cheese. that, okay, <laughs> too funny. All right, and question four is: Do you have a dog voice? I do. I will also spare you uh, the dog voice. Rachel has a very specific dog voice that we do at the house, and uh, I think it's very funny, but I, I won't let it live on the internet. <laughs> okay. And just to clarify, is it, it's it, is it you imitating her voice? Yes. Or, are you speaking, or the voice you speak to her in? It's me imitating her voice. And how okay. She Can you describe it? Situations. Like what, what kind of personality? What do you, what do you try? Yeah. Her personality is like, she's like an older woman. She's lived in Queens her whole life. She's kind of like sick of it all. Like she's, you know, um, she's just like, oh God. Yeah. I, I, I regret that you get, you're not going to share it, but I uh, can't say I blame you. have to come over and hang out. <laughs> all right. And last but not least, I ask uh, if there's a dog organization or a service that you'd like to shout out that's just uh, done, done good for you in the past. Um, absolutely. Cat Cares. Um, you can find her on Instagram. It's Cat Cares LLC, I think is the little handle. And um, the ACCT shelter in Philadelphia is a great program that volunteers down there are working super hard constantly. And, uh, and it's just like great organization where they take in pets. They have a vet service and, and all that. So uh, Great. I'm sure every community has their version of that, hopefully, and so it's definitely uh, worth supporting, looking into, you know. Great. If you can't I'll, have uh, a dog, there's a lot of things like the runner's club where it's like you can go walk the dog and give them a break, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll gather all that information and uh, put it in the show notes with links so people can uh, find them in the Philly area. Yeah, awesome. Well, Gina, you're you're concluding your first and probably first of many to come dog oriented interviews. This is definitely my first dog. Interview. <laughs> okay. I know I came in a little more prepared to like these are always just music based. So, yeah. yeah, I figured you, you get a lot of gear stuff and uh, yeah. your pedals and uh, oh, yeah. a lot of uh, you know, stuff for touring albums, all that stuff, but never uh, what I want to talk about, which is <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> well, she's adorable. And uh, thank you for sharing the story of Rachel and Kelpie. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, best best of luck with the rest of the year. I know you're off to Europe soon. So, uh, Absolutely, yeah. so good luck with all that. And I know it sounds like Rachel will be in good hands. So awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. My pleasure.